the uh, fletching of the hive. I was going to bring it, I just didn't think I had time is or space or cleanliness. This is the stuff the nice oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the beaver tail. Okay. And this is duck. And geese. Geese. Okay. Big ones are geese and the little ones are ducks. Canadian okay. geese. Yes. Yeah, you want to clean this table up? Sure. So tradition to catch a beaver, you would follow the same process. Uh, you take a beaver trap and you would identify an area where there's a beaver present, mainly you know, by seeing a beaver dam. What you're going to do is you're going to find an area of about 12 to 16 inches of water and then you're going to place this trap in that water. Um, and then you're going to take your chain and you're going to stake the chain onto the bank um, with a hardy stake. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll place a branch or a twig above the trap and you'll put some castor oil on it. Castor oil is uh, an oil that comes from the castor glands of a beaver and they rub it on their surroundings just like a dog does to mark their territory. When that beaver in the river smells that castor oil, he's going to come check out that scent. He's going to try to figure out who's in his territory. Uh, when he comes to smell that, he's going to kick with his legs in the water. Kicking mm -hmm. with his legs in the water, he is going to hit this plate, which is going to set off the trap and grab his leg. Now this trap doesn't have teeth, and it's not strong enough to break the bone of a beaver's leg. What it's going to do is it's going to tightly hold on to the beaver's leg for a long period of time. Now beavers have no natural predators, so when they get attacked in shallow water, their only instinct is to go to deep water. They're going to go to deep water underwater, and then they're going to continuously be attacked. So they're going to think, I got to stay underwater, and they'll actually drown themselves underwater. So when you hunt beaver, you hunt it in the winter time. That's when the hair is the longest and the most full. So that's when the hides are going to be worth the most. So you can leave that beaver underwater for a week, a month at a time, and that engagé trapper will come back and he'll pull out his chain. And just like fishing, he's going to pull a beaver up at the end of his line. Once you have that beaver, the first process is going to be skinning the beaver. Now the skin is what you want from the beaver, that's what you're going to make your money at. So the process is uh, pretty simple, like all animals, you're going to skin it. Uh, you're going to skin around the legs, uh, the front and the hind legs, and then you're going to skin the face of the animal too. So as you can see, I have ear holes and eye holes here. Mm -hmm. Now you actually start in the inner lip of the beaver and you pull down and you will skin it out and you'll have the whole face and everything on the hide. Once you have the hide processed uh, or skinned out, you're going to flesh the hide. That's going to be removing all the fat, the membranes, the tissue, and the flesh off the hide um, to a clean kind of state like this. Mm -hmm. Once it's fleshed out, you need to hoop it, which is going to be taking a beaver hide, taking a willow hoop, uh, tying the beaver hide to the willow hoop with uh, sinew, and then uh, stretching it out to a nice perfect circle. Now this one has been trimmed so it's more circular, uh, which is uh, traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, you would also sew these legs closed uh, during the tanning process, and you can see there are holes around the edges here. Once it's sewed up and once it's on a hoop, you're going to apply chemicals to it, uh, mostly brain tanning, which is a process where you take the brains of the animal and you boil them, and then you develop acids within the, the brain material to tan the hide. Uh, as it dries and tans, uh, you'll leave it out in the sun or in a cool, dry area, and it'll tan the hide. And you'll bring that hide out. Uh, you can use a coarse stone or whatnot to somewhat sand the hide to make it more flat, get hit any membrane or tissue you might have missed, make it to a nice smooth uh, tan surface like this. You cut the stitching on the holes and then you'll get your hide out like this. Uh, and then you'll bring this hide to uh, a fur trapping post to sell it. Um, so that's the rest of the process for the hide. Mm -hmm. uh, now there's a couple different things that are on beavers, you know, of course there's meat, there's not very much meat, uh, almost all the meat's located on the hind legs, um, and it wasn't traditionally eaten that much. It's meat, but it's not very good. Um, there's deer out there, and there's other wildlife. But something that is always eaten, which I'll bring over here, is the beaver tail. Now the beaver tail was known as a, a delicacy. Um, it is uh, kind of the consistency of marrow. There's a lot of fat in it. Uh, but it also cooks flaky like a fish does. Um, it's kind of like a white fish when it's cooked. The process for cooking this tail, we taking the tail exactly like it is, uh, just cut off the animal, and placing it on top of the fire. Uh, that fire will bubble this brown skin off of the meat. And once the entire thing is kind of bubbled and detached, you can peel the skin off of the tail. 
and you're left with kind of a fatty white uh, fish looking uh, material. You place that back on the fire to cook the, uh, the meat and then you'll take that off the fire and eat it with bread or crackers or whatnot. And then that's the whole process. Can you describe what you're doing? Yes. Oh, I'm just uh, I'm moving the hair off this. When I took the tail off the beaver, I left some hair on. It's just probably not going to smell great when you put it on the fire. So it's final preparation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but depending on what they're making it out of, you know, as soon as they harvest it, they're paid for so the hogs, you know, they would make it. Um, you mentioned that a beaver is mostly intestinal tract and all that. Yeah. Would they still use that? I couldn't imagine that they would. I okay. It's probably just throwing it away. All right. Um, yeah, you think about it, you know, the harder it is to digest what an animal's eating, the more intestines they tend to have to digest it. So yeah. if you're eating wood, it's yeah. probably quite a bit of a. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, you can see it's pretty fatty besides, mm -hmm. you know, the, the bone in there, so it's pretty white. Let's we'll see how it goes. Well, that can stay on. Yeah. I'm just, I don't want to put it so close to the fire, that's why it's going to burn. Okay. So I'm trying to think about what I should do with it. Do you have any ideas? I would put it, leave it, um, I would take one of the logs out from underneath it, move the log, and leave it there. Leave it on the grid Okay. So you're cooking the tail now? Yes. Do 
You want to take this home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it like leather? Yes, the outside is. The inside, uh, it kind of smells like lobster to me. Um, but it's you're teasing them. I'm, yeah. Well, it's don't very you sticky. It smell like it doesn't look like perch. Yeah, it's, it's it doesn't. It's not fishy at all. It, it has more of a. It, it's it's supposed to be very fatty, like beef. It's 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 more. It is more like marrow. If everybody has to try some. Oh yeah. I already sampled some. Oh, you always sample everything first. That's because I'm in charge. I can do it. <laughs> Besides, if anybody's gonna, you know, die, that'd be me because you guys are doing all the oh, work. Oh, that's true. Ah. Stuck on your finger. Would someone flip the the, the duck on the fire? Sure. Here. Careful, because it is not flat, so it'll slide right off if you're not careful. Here, Carolyn. Ah. Ah. You have no fingerprints when you're done. You're right. Yeah. What's that? Has everybody showed up to eat yet, or is it still no. so okay? We got to have a few minutes. Okay. That's good. Richard, what time do you have? And we were aiming for 10 30, 12 30, right? Yep. We'll be right on time. It's like glue. Forget the horses. Can I add I think we're good. Okay. There's just some holdouts in there that aren't cooking. Well, if they're, if they're parsnips, parsnips take a lot to get cooked. Maybe we should do the parsnips first from now on. Or at least start them first. Start them first and then put the carrots in. Because we didn't put a lid on it. Uh, or to steam them. Yeah, right. Or put a steam lid on to steam them to start with. Yeah. If you look, we've learned from experience going on, you get much. Yeah. But you know, I've been adding a little water to the pump. Okay. So just so they haven't been totally dry. About ready to throw it back on? Yeah, I'm just going to try to get these last pieces off. These came from. Good. Well, there's. I think this is the last side, so. Sugar. I heard somebody ask you when you kind of went, uh. Well, I remember when Nancy told me that you can't wait to sugar is not going to be sure. Um, it comes in like a miniature traffic. Yeah, so they're packing these barrels, but then we actually. Yeah, new fingerprints. Yeah. It almost looks like a fish. Yeah, it does with a tail flipped up like that. Not behind me. Okay. I'm going to leave this skin here for people to see. Is there anything else that needs to be cooked? No, I think we're good. Okay. Is there anything set out or is this... Not yet. Okay. Take your take that pan and set it over to warm up again. Sure. Mm -hmm. Would you cut it or fillet it now? Oh, we got to cook it a little more. Right. It'll kind of, it will probably just do it into thin slivers. I see. But that is all meat now, or is that, that more? Yeah, well, you can see that so there's some cartilage there. inside. Right. So there's going to be. Okay. There's going to be. Uh, so we're going to kind of we'll kind of skim it off. The rest of the, the white flesh there is actually meat. Yes. Okay. Fat and meat. Quite a bit there. Okay. Uh, no, we don't have, there wasn't much to it. It's a small beaver. Well, beavers themselves aren't, don't have very much meat. Okay. It's really just the tail. Um, I think wow. these might be ready. So, it does taste more like marrow rather than fish. Yes. <laughs> was that me? That was me. Yeah, I just didn't want it to stab you. I'm kind of glad it doesn't taste like chicken. No, it doesn't taste like chicken. Yeah, because I just want to say that. Yeah. It doesn't taste. It doesn't taste uh, fishy at all. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Can I get both of those actually? Yep. It is. I don't think it's worth trying to press it. I was thinking to put butter. You want to put I think okay. it's already so fatty. You can probably throw that on top. And only on matter too much. My only fear is it slides right off. I think you're going to be able to. I think I'll be able to. It looks good. Yeah, it's not too over to your juice. Yeah, it's possible to be balanced. I've worked with it.
How much longer do you let it cook? Um, you know, I don't really know. Uh, I think I'm going to get it a little brown on both sides and that's it. Okay. Yeah, it does look like a piece of fish. It doesn't taste like fish at all. It doesn't taste like fish. No. Unfortunately, we can't feed the visitors. Oh, I know, but I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I don't know if I didn't want to. Yes, but. Yeah, but on the other hand. Yeah. What's one nice thing about being a volunteer? Yep. There you go. Mm. Well done. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Oh, I chase this Are you like chunk it up or? Yeah. We'll see. Here's two pieces you guys want to try. Okay. You went for the small one, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it taste like? Chicken. Chicken. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's not. Okay, we have hot pan, hot pan. You know, it's a very neutral taste to me. Yes, it does. It's, 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 you know, it's kind of like yeah, bad. Yeah, it's bad. different. It has texture. Well, the bad texture. Fatty. Fatty. Texture. Really fatty. It looks like there's mm -hmm. quite a bit. Well, it, the texture is fat. Okay, yeah. It's gelatinous. Yeah. yeah. Gelatinous, yeah. Okay. So, but neutral, does it like the right. Taste tastes like marrow? That's no, what? Actually, not too much. It, okay. Yeah, well, there's butter and salt and pepper on there, so I think it helps. Uh -huh. It's very rich. It's probably high in calories. Oh, I'm sure. Just like marrow, you know, 100% cholesterol. Yeah. But if you're out in the wilderness... That would be very good. Yeah. This is a duck I'm cutting up. Goose. Goose. Yeah. And it's... It looks like I cooked it pretty decent. Yeah. 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 I wanted to taste it. Uh, what are your other condiments here that you have? Uh, cranberries. Uh, this is cheddar cheese. It's, it's white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a little thicker. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I realized that was my mind and I'm like, oh, oh, no. Wow. Let's see. There's so many. Use, 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 you could use pickled peppers. Then we crush. And then everything else that you've got left yeah. would be uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Well, correct. Last time I made bread, because you have, did you have elk in it? Is that what it was? Yeah. No, it's geese. Peace. Damn. So we have pit, we have pickles, uh, peppers from the garden, we have peas, we have cream cheese from the dairy, we have bacon from the hoops. So how's the beaver? It's not bad. Not bad. Yeah, this is goose. I think goose or duck, one of those. Mm. Really perfect, that right. There's very shrub over here if anybody wants any. Mm. Have any of you had beaver before? No. I'm a cracker. Oh. I don't eat peas. Can you describe what's on the table? Yes, we have. What we have here is we have some uh, roasted goose and some roasted duck legs. Mm -hmm. Some pickled, pickled um, peppers with uh, goose inside and mm -hmm. a little clotted cream wrapped in bacon and roasted. We have a uh, beef and pork pie that was baked in the brick oven. We've got um, carrots and parsnips and the little onions that were roasted over the hearth. And then we have the beaver. Mm -hmm. So this is the beaver tail. And look at the skin. This is what we had to cook it and peel off. The skin of the mm -hmm. beaver tail. Uh, it's quite um, gelatinous and a little sticky and some of the pieces are a little chewy and some of it's very very soft like marrow. We have some pickles that were from the cucumbers grown in the garden that um, um, that we pickled and preserved in the manner they would have done in the 1840s. 
some white cheddar cheese, which is normally what they would have had, some cranberry chutney, cranberries were very local here, mm -hmm. some berry jam, and fresh bread that we just baked. So do, usually Dr. McLaughlin wanted a five to seven course meal. So I think we sort of produced something similar today. Thank you.